After testing tons of vintage over the last month, I've come to the conclusion that I love Hull Breacher right now in the metagame, and Lavinia is quite good as well. So today we're playing Aspatinka. Why is Hull Breacher so good? Well, it's actually kind of obvious. When you look at the metagame, there's two decks that are sort of rising at the moment. The first would be Jewel Shops, the deck based around Coveted Jewel. It's a Mishra's Workshop deck that also uses Paradoxical Outcome and the One Ring. It draws lots of cards. If your opponents are drawing lots of cards, well, Hull Breacher is pretty good. And then you have the Demir Terror deck, which uses Mishra's Bobble alongside Lurse of the Dream Den to accumulate card advantage. Once again, Hull Breacher very good there. But really... Lavinia is amazing in those two matchups as well. It's good against the mirror match. It's good on the play versus initiative. It's amazing versus the bizarre decks. I think Lavinia is one of the biggest reasons to be playing white at the moment. So after playing a bunch of the Underworld Breach Grixis deck, I kept on being jealous of all the white cards. I thought that Teferi was very good. I thought Lavinia was amazing. Swords to Plowshares is pretty good against the initiative deck, but I never had any issues with Lightning Bolt. And I just think that really I want to be playing Lavinia. I even tried to fit in a third copy over the Dig Through Time, but most lists only play two. I'm considering a third. We'll see how this league goes with only two, but I'm really, really loving that card right now. So that is why I'm playing Esper Tinker today. Hopefully you enjoyed my faux Boston accent on the intro. I love doing that. Panda, Tinka, Flusta, all that stuff. But enough joking around. Uh, I just kind of excited to play this deck today. So we're going to hop on into the first round. Let me know if you have any thoughts, comments, questions, suggestions. I'll see you there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to match number one. We're on the draw and I'm going to keep. No clue what our opponent's playing today, but Force plus Ursa Saga and Opposition Agent. This hand seems very reasonable to me. All right, they've taken a mulligan to four. I believe I've played this person recently and they were not on a Bazaar deck. That said, Bazaar of Baghdad seems incredibly likely on a mulligan to four. Let's find out. Mock Sapphire, not likely a Bizarre Baghdad deck. Okay. Oath of Druids. I will Force of Negation exiling to Fairy. They have one card in hand. Let's play the Island and Manifold Key. Pass. They have two cards in hand. Mox Pearl. Uh, I think I'm actually supposed to lead on the Pearl here. And unfortunately... I decided to play a basic on turn one, and now I'm being punished because I couldn't play Urza Saga and a Black Source on this turn. So I guess I was supposed to lead on one of the other lands. Unfortunate. They play a Lotus Petal. Oko, Thief of Crowns. Okay. They make a food token. We'll draw the Mox Jet. We'll play the Underground Sea. We'll play the Jet. Pass the turn. Oath of Druids off the top. That is not good for me. Holy moly. So they can give me a creature no matter what here. So what is my best path moving forward? I think I need to hide the opposition agent still. This was a very good mulligan to four. They're going to turn my key into an elk. Yeah, that's going to happen. On the end step, we will create a construct token. And now we'll draw. It's another land. We'll make another construct. Search our deck. I believe I'm supposed to get Sensei's Divining Top here. And let's spin the top. What to do, what to do. Force of Will is obviously a little late. I think I'm supposed to put a Hull Breacher on top. The Academy taps for five, so I could play both Agent and Hull Breacher next turn. I want to get the Oko out of here, I think. So this is not a search effect. I'd like to point that out. Um, but they're going to get an Atroxa. I think I'm supposed to allow this to happen. The Atroxa will trigger. 
They choose Max Jet, Force of Negation, Oath of Druid, Show and Tell, Strip Mind, and Oko. Wow, that was a very good Atroxa. They play the Mox Jet and Strip Mine. We'll tap for five blue. Let's play Opposition Agent. And before Mana Pool empties, I'll spin the top. But I think I want the Force of Will. Hull Breacher isn't going to help me here. Okay, so I guess it's kind of free to spin top. I'm not doing anything else with my mana. I don't want any of those. We can fetch, grab a Tundra, spin top again. And those were all bad. I'm going to just pass the turn. There's no point attacking into an Atroxa. The Oath will trigger. They can get, grab another one. And they do. They pick up Underground Sea, Gitaxian Probe, Mental Misstop, and a Mox Emerald. Sure. They probe me and see my sad force of will. Now they attack for 7, I'll fall to 12, and the opponent passes. Discards Demonic Tutor, we'll draw the known mental misstep, I'll top. 3 artifacts, pretty sure I've lost this game at this point. Pass the turn. Both triggers, they choose not to use it. They play Besaju as their land for the turn. Yeah, I mean, for a mulligan to 4, I've been dominated here, and I'm just good to go to game number 2. That game did not play out the way that we wanted. Okay. I believe I want the Mind Break Trap and Fluster Storm. I don't think that this is a very good Lavinia matchup, so that can get boarded out here. This is one of the few matchups where I don't like the card. And then we're at 61. Like, Swords I don't think is actually that great here. Like, you could Swords your own thing, but I'm not sure if that's like a move I actually want to make. I think I would almost rather have Balance. Let's try this. Game number two of match one on the play. I'm not allowed to keep this hand. It's just way too reactive and doesn't do anything. I think I'm supposed to keep this. Get rid of the Yogmoss will. We'll play in Urza's Saga. Pass the turn. Another spot where Force of Negation really shines over something like Spell Pierce is that in this spot where I'm planning on using Lorien Reveal to go get my land, I still have Force Indigation available. A lot of lists are playing Spell Pierce right now. I'm just not a fan of that card. I'd rather have the Force of Negations. I hope this Mana Crypt deals our opponent 21 damage. Cycle the Lorien Revealed. Our opponent's a Wasteland deck, so I think I'm going to grab the Basic, which might be a Coward's move, but I think I want Blue Mana this game. So, and it appears that they have Turn 1 Ancestral Recall. I'm not loving this. Yep. We draw Opposition Agent, pass the turn, Mana Crypt, they lost the flip, they play a Bayou, Mock Sapphire, they have seven cards left, Pearl, and Oko. I'm going to brainstorm in response. Interesting. I don't want the Opposition Agent, and then we can put like Time Walk on top. I'm going to try to... Get them to force back on this Oko, or fight back. I don't actually care about the Oko at the moment, but if they use some counter magic on this, I'm happy. And they did not. Okay. So we'll draw the time walk, and now I'm going to tap the Saga for mana. So if we had another artifact in play, Black Lotus would be the pick here, because I could Fluster Storm back up my Tinker, but I think instead what I'm supposed to do is grab like a Soul Ring, and hope to Gitaxian Probe into a blue source. I'll go to 18, play Probe. Luster Storm, Demonic Tutor, another Oko, and double Besaju. Okay then. That is not good for me. Not sure what to do here. I'm going to Time Walk, I think. That resolved. Go to our next turn. And I think I'm obligated to pass here. Mana Crypt brings them down to 13. Demonic Tutor happens. Strip Mine. We'll flash in a Hull Breacher. They play an Oko. So this is actually a really good spot for me to win the game if I could draw a blue source. But I'm pretty sure we know our opponent's whole hand, or most of their hand, and they can't interact. So if I draw a blue source off the top, we could tinker. Come on, deck pretty please. That is a blue source. Attempt a tinker sacrificing... Mock Sapphire, because if we Yogmoss will, this is a blue mana. Grab Bolas's Citadel. 
We'll hold priority and cast another copy of Hull Breacher. All right, so this is our land drop. The top of our deck needs to be good after this. The fairy's a great reveal. It gives me another redraw. Okay. I guess I will bounce the Mox Pearl. And there's the top. That was amazing. Okay. Draw a card. Play top. I'm at 11. I don't think I want to play another Teferi. Play top. Mox Pearl. I'm at 9. Draw a card. Play another top. Draw the Force of Will, play top. So with this deck, there's no Storm payoff. Like there's no Brain Freeze, no Tendrils of Agony. Instead, what you're looking to do is use Time Vault and uh, Manifold Key to take infinite turns. However, it looks like we are drawing a whole lot of nothing here. I'm at four life right now. I'll draw another card. I'm at three. So if they give me their Mana Crypt with... Oko, I'm dead. Assuming that I lose the flip. I can attack the Oko down to two, so that way they can't exchange it immediately. I'm going to draw another card. This brings me to two life. My own Mana Crypt. Perfect. So, Citadel, I can attack them for three. And then, how many permanents do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. I could play... Mana Crypt, which would be 7. Time Vault would be 8. And I'm 2 short of lethal. Ooh, okay, I can sacrifice Teferi. I'd be 1 short of lethal. I'm going to spin the top. Okay, so that's actually not very good for me. We'll put Opposition Agent on the bottom. And now I'm going to attack Oko. And we'll go to cleanup. Discard some lands. I'm going to choose to get rid of all of my fetch lands, which might seem crazy because I have a top in play, but I, want, I need the ability to cast force. And I know that I have another saga on top, so I'm going to discard the one in hand. They win their mana, clip, mana crypt flip. They play a mox pearl. For some reason, I crossed off a besaju. They still have two besajus in hand. I don't know why I did that. They haven't used one yet. And they cast tinker. I'm going to force of negation. Exiling a Fluster Storm. They cannot Fluster Storm back due to my Teferi in play. And they concede. Nice. All right. We are going to game number three. I think I'm good with no changes. Let's send it back. You like, in theory, you could bring in the Needle for Besaju. Um, after we saw that they have two of them. I'm not sure that's a great move. Maybe it's better than Balance, though. We'll try it. This is a hand. We will keep. And now they get to see my hand. That's not good for us. Usually Mind Break Trap is best when your opponent doesn't know about it. That's a Black Lotus. They have four cards in hand. We'll play the Pearl. And I'm just going to burn the Time Lock. Like, we drew another blue card. I think it's fine. We'll draw for turn, and it's a Force of Will. Okay. They're fetching with the Saga Trigger on the stack. Is a Hardcast Force of Vigor? It is. I will Force of Will exiling the Mind Break Trap that they know about. There's a Saga. Sweet. Okay, so they have four cards in hand. Included Delta for an Underground Sea. That's Oath of Druids with two cards in hand. I am not going to worry about Construct Tokens here. We're going to go grab Tinker. Play Vamp. I love Tatanka. It's really the only reason to play Vintage, in my opinion. Like, if you're not tinkering, you're doing it wrong. Okay. Here we go. Tinker with Force Backup. Storm 1. Go grab Blossom's Citadel. Player Land. Well, do I want to play Hull Breacher? Because <laughs> um, if I fizzle, I'm going to feel dumb. Giving them an Oath Trigger. I think we're going to. We'll hold priority on a Hull Breacher. I guess I didn't hold priority on that on accident. Play Mana Crypt. Okay, Black Lotus. There's a Force of Will. I will cast Ponder. Wow, that's amazing here. Okay, so we'll put the top in the middle and we'll draw the other Force. Play the top and that should be the match. Look at their hand. They had Flash Bayou. We'll play Needle. We'll say Basaju. Sage who endures, played the ruby from hand, 
Let's draw the other hull breacher. I don't need it. Play the top. We'll draw another card. You have to be aware that I could die to my top here. We don't want that to happen. All right, so I can play Teferi here and bounce my Mana Crypt. And let's do that right now. I'm at six life. We'll draw a card. Ancestral Recall is a good one. Let's cast that. I'm at four. Let's spin the top. Okay, so I'm going to draw this Lorene Revealed. And then we'll play top again. And then I'm going to shuffle my deck. We'll grab a Tundra. All right, so this brings me to two. If I can find Time Vault, it's lethal. Hmm. We'll spin top. I'm at two life. A few clunky cards that I can't use. I'll play the Mox Jet. And I believe I have to pass here into their Oath of Druids. I'll discard the... I can discard some of these lands. Okay. So now they get to Oath and Atroxa into play. I did give them the creature here. I understand that it's my own fault. So I did put a needle on Beseju who endures, and they revealed one to the Atroxa. All right, with Atroxa, they've selected Demonic Tutor, Oath of Druids, Forbidden Orchard, Mystical Tutor, and Mana Crypt. They play Mox Jet, Mana Crypt. I'm wondering if I made a play mistake. I'm wondering if maybe I should have kept the Misty over the second Urza Saga, because like, the fetch to help me dig for a time vault would be better than a random saga. You could argue that playing the whole breacher off of the Velasa Citadel was an error. I'm not sure if it actually was. I think in the spot that I was in, you have to accept that you're not always going to win. Uh, so we know that they have another Atroxa in hand. I'll go to one life and let's force. And now they're going to Demonic Tutor and I will Fluster Storm. So I'm trying to give myself the best odds. I wonder if I'm supposed to use the Manifold Key in top here to draw two. Because that gives me two shuffles off of Lorian next turn. So I'm going to draw a card. I'm then going to untap. And now I will put a spin. I'm going to hold priority. I'll put a spin on the stack. And then I'm going to draw a card. I don't think that actually matters. But I should have put the spin on the stack at the beginning. Uh, another oath, I don't care, sure. So the question is, do I draw this Lorien Revealed or do I shuffle? Lorien Revealed would give me another spin next turn, but it's very costly mana-wise. I think I might want the extra shuffle effect. I'm going to draw the Lorien Revealed. And now I'm going to tap the Saga for mana. We'll go get some mana out of our deck. I believe Soul Ring is what I want here. Okay, Brainstorm is not the worst. Four minutes on the clock. Play top and draw a card. Cast the brainstorm. Dig through time after I just used a blue source. That's awkward. We'll put back the saga and force of will. Tap the soul ring. Let's cycle a Lorian revealed. Grab underground sea. Play the underground sea and let's cast dig. We have one colorless floating. Yogmoss will. That might do it. And demonic tutor. Okay, we'll play the Emerald. Our opponent's at 16. Play Mana Crypt. Okay, let's quickly count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to play the top. And now I'm going to untap the Mana Crypt. We're going to use Boss the Citadel twice in three minutes. Pass Yogmoss Will. Activate the Citadel. Okay, now we Yog Will. Sorry, I'm playing a little bit sloppy just because I'm low on time. We're recasting a bunch of spells from our graveyard. We'll play Ruby. We'll play the top. That's eight permanents. Needle. I'll say Beseju. Tap for mana. Play uh, Manifold Key. We'll play Mana Crypt. Sacrifice the Black Lotus for three black. Play Citadel. We have a minute 50 to click on 10 things. Okay, so I've selected 10 things. We're now activating Citadel again. Boom! We we have a card that's kind of like Tendrils of Agony. That was an insane match. Wow. All right, we're officially 1-0. That was nuts. Let's try to win the next four. 
Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Match number two on the play. Our opponent reveals a Lures of the Dream Den. This seems like a keep to me. All right, so we're likely facing the Lures control deck. I have an interesting hand here because if I can draw another mana, we can set up a Tinker win. But I could also just go get Ancestral Recall with this Mystical Tutor. I think I want the basic here just to avoid Wasteland. The Lurus deck does play a bunch of Wastelands. Misty Rainforest Pass. Let's use that Mystical. And grab Old Ancestral. I'm going to burn the Time Lock. Maybe that's wrong, but I kind of feel like I just want to see what my top card is before deciding what the play is. I lose the ability to have double force. And maybe that's going to bite me. And let's try to Ancestral. Mental Misstep. Horse removing the Hull Breacher. Yep. Punish for the time walk. Bummer. I'm really far behind now. That was a bad move. Okay. Manifold key. No second land. Still has four cards though. Saga was a good draw. Okay. Robe sees my sad force will plus swords to plowshares. Black Lotus. I'm in trouble. That'll do. Okay. Stupid time walk play. It was silly. I think we want Flusterstorm in this matchup. I had to assume my opponent's on the Lavinia version. I could be wrong. So I think I want to leave in Swords to Plowshares. Not interested in Mystical Tutor. I probably board out the Mox Emerald. I'll try this. Okay, so we're going to try to play better this time. I'm a little embarrassed by the time walk play. Awkward. So we have the Ancestral. We don't have the blue card for Force of Negation. I still think I'm going to keep this though. Play Underground Sea plus Mox Ruby. I'm like really not loving Swords to Plowshares right now. I mean, almost every list plays two right now, but I but part of me wanted to play zero. And this is twice now that I've just wished that it was a blue card. Okay, so they have Mox Sapphire, which is really good when I have this Ancestral in hand. Okay, we draw another Force of Negation. And their upkeep, I'm going to attempt the Ancestral. Another mental misstep. This feels bad. Okay. Force, Exiling Force. Gonna Fluster Storm me. Ancestral? Oh my, it actually resolved. How about that? Saga goes to the second chapter. Looted Delta. Yogmoss will. Let's play Saga. And Key. Pass the turn. Red. Okay. Grixis Lurus. Could be a breach deck. They grab key. That's scary. They attack. I'm going to attempt the swords to plowshares here. I'm going to allow ponder to happen. Okay. Another saga. So if they have the time vault, I'm in a lot of trouble here. They have five cards in hand. So I could Yogmoss will back the ancestral, but it would be unprotected, and then I wouldn't have Fluster Storm next turn. Unless I drew a blue source. Let's try the Ogwell. Maybe this will open up a Blossom Citadel next turn. The Force of Will exiling Lorien revealed. We'll play Saga. Hope that they don't have Time Vault. They have four cards in hand. I'll take three of them at 17. They play a land. I don't like them fetching. Not one bit. And there's the Time Vault. They just naturally had it. Two games in a row. Oh, that's devastating. Yep. My Fluster Storm, not good enough. Okay. Ah, uh, that's unfortunate. Next turn we had Blossom Citadel back by Fluster, but sometimes that's magic and we are now one and one. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com shop for $14.99. 
This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. We are on the play in the third match looking to bounce back after that tough loss. And when I initially saw this hand, I was very excited about the possibility of having Black Lotus plus Tinker. The downside, the rest of our hand does nothing. So I have to mulligan. This is the most fair hand ever. So what I'm learning this league is I might not like Swords to Plowshares in my uh, vintage combo main deck. I think it's a really good cyborg card, but I don't know if I want them in my main deck. Like, I, I'm, I'm just not convinced. This seems really bad to me. Um, but I guess I'll keep and I'll bottom one of them. Play the Underground Sea past the turn. In their upkeep, I will cast Ancestral Recall. It is met by a Force of Will, Exiling Force of Will. Okay. They play a Saga. Refined Force of Negation. I'll play my own Saga. Their Saga goes up to the second chapter. Yogmoss Will. I'm going to attempt to ferry here. Grab Tundra, Blue, White, Colorless, the Fairy Time Raveler. It is met by another force. Okay, we are passing. They're using the... Ooh, they get Max out. I would have guessed Black Lotus there. But they floated a Colorless. Brainstorm. They play another Saga. They have four cards in hand. Time Vault. Okay, so you're telling me I need to win quickly. We'll draw for turn. It's a Lorian Revealed. I'm going to make a Construct. We don't actually have a whole lot going on with our hand. So we might actually want the Construct here. Sacrifice for Black. Play Yogmoss Will. A third force? Wow. <laughs> uh, I think I'm done for. I have no way of stopping this saga. I chose not to play Wasteland today. That was a decision that I made. Um... The list that play Wasteland play more lands, but also there's more games where you're just color screwed because you're playing six to seven colorless lands in your deck, and I didn't want that. So it looks like I am dead here to the Time Vault combo. Wow. Our opponent drew five forces that game. They cast three of them, but they drew five. It's pretty impressive. Okay, so we need to beat that going into the next game. I'm taking the swords out of the deck. I am so sick of drawing them. We'll bring in the flusters. Also, I have not drawn Lavinia this league, like, at all. I guess I could have drawn Opposition Agent. That was my out. And I could bring in Needle for the Time Vault combo. Maybe I was supposed to do that in the previous round, but, like, I'm also a Time Vault combo deck, so, like, is that even good? I'll board out the Emerald for a Pithy Needle. Let's try this. I'm not convinced that I like this move, but we'll see. I'm... Can't keep this. The Academy doesn't tap for mana, even though I have a Lorian revealed. This hand doesn't actually do anything. I'll go to five. Sure. Let's bottom. It's a fairy and a force of negation. Play the saga, pass the turn. So you might be saying, why not play the top? If I play top and my opponent wastelands me, I have no mana. Or if I lead on Lorian revealed, I can guarantee my ability to play magic. Okay, so they have turn one top. Let's cycle the Lorian. We'll grab a Tundra. Saga goes up to the second chapter. We find a Brainstorm. Play the top. Pass the turn back. On our end step, they spin their top. They play a Nurse's Saga. We'll spin top. I think we take the Mock Sapphire here. We'll draw that for mana. Grab Soul Ring. Play the Sapphire. Let's try to hard cast the Lorian. Luster. Okay. On my end step, they spin top. They play a Scalding Tarn, Ancestral. I'm going to attempt to force. And apparently it resolves somehow. Maybe they just don't value the Ancestral that highly. They didn't bother topping or anything. In our upkeep, I will spin top. We find a Time Walk. We will... Play the time walk, loading a colorless. 
Feels weird that they'd fight over the time walk, but not the force of will on ancestral recall. Okay, I'll spin the top. Put Teferi on top of her deck. Pass the turn. They spin top again. Sure. They're not making a construct. I might just be dead here. They grab key. They probably have the time vault. There it is. Okay, so we are now one and two. I think that I could... <laughs> I know that it probably seems silly, but like having swords to plushers in your combo deck has bitten me twice so far. Uh, not super in love with that. I also haven't drawn Lavinia, which has been a tiny bit frustrating. So I'm not sure what to believe quite yet. I'm going to play matches three and four and decide if I want to continue exploring this or not. So let's see how those go. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. All right, match number four on the play. Our opponent reveals a Lurus, and this hand stinks. Send it back. Okay, so this is Time Vault combo with Force Backup. We'll keep and put the swords on the bottom. Play the Urza Saga, pass the turn. They play a Bobble, Mock Sapphire, Urza Saga. Okay. So they're going to draw a card off the Bobble here. We draw a Moss Well, I have not been in love with this card this league. I felt like it's been really clunky. So I'm learning a lot this league, despite like I'm not doing well, but... I'm learning what I do and don't like about this deck, and maybe I can make a deck that I do like based on what I'm learning here. Like Teferi has seemed very good this league. Lavinia has seemed fairly decent. They flash an address down. Okay. Time Vault. Sweet. Pass the turn. There's a Saga goes to the second chapter. I will force Ancestral Recall, exiling Teferi. I don't want to show them Hull Breacher. Ancestral is countered. They play an island, so that's not a wasteland. Soul Ring? Do you have Tinker? Mana Vault? Uh-oh, are you Paradoxical Outcome? Dress Down. And a Concession, nice. Okay, so we've taken game number one. Let's get Swords to Plowshares out of our combo deck. Bring in the Flusters. I want the Mind Break. We'll cut the Mox Emerald. Let's try this. Okay, so I've opened up Lavinia in a hand with no acceleration. And we're on the draw with two three drops and four lands. I think I should mo like this is a hand that plays magic, but it's very slow. I think this is significantly better. We'll keep and get rid of the second hole breacher. They play a bobble, Valerian Academy, Mana Vault. Don't love that. Okay. So this is a hand where if our opponent tries to go for it, we might be able to blow them out of the water. Pass the turn. They don't use the bobble. So I think they are paradoxical outcome deck. Mock Sapphire. They put Lurus to their hand. Okay. Then they bobble. On the end step, I'm going to flash in a whole breacher. They fetch in response. Our opponent has only played one spell. They force a will, I will fluster storm. So they have three cards, one of which is a Lurus. So they'll draw a card, instead I'll get a treasure. And I could upkeep Vampiric Tutor right now, but like we don't actually have anything to get at the moment. So I'll take a draw. Pack for three, pass the turn. Mana Vault deals them one, they're at 15. They cycle a Lurian Revealed. They grab another Underground Sea. Is this just Lurus? Sure. They replay the bobble. On the end step, we will Vampire Tutor for Time Vault. And now we can float mana and go get key and play the Time Vault. All right, so we have finally assembled the Time Vault key combo instead of all of our opponents. We are now two and two, one match left to go. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. Alright, the final match of this miserable Swords to Plowshares filled league, speaking of the devil. 
Um, I think that the sand is likely still good enough. We will keep. All right, we'll play the Misty Rainforest. We'll go get the Basic Island. Play the Mox Pearl. Let's try Time Vault. Pass. Ancient Tomb, Mox Emerald. Okay. Is this finally not a blue deck? Four mana for a Karn the Great piece of trash. Well, Karn, you can go to the graveyard because nobody likes you. No one. Not a single soul. What? You're a blue Karn deck? Well, you're just a bad person. I believe that we have just lost this game on turn one. So they're on jewel shops. Okay. So it is a blue deck. A blue deck that just stomped us because I have sorts to plowshares in my hand. Yep. No coming back from this. Okay. Yep, I've seen enough here. Womp womp. That was miserable. Although this is the matchup that I wanted hull breachers for, so I'm really interested to see how they hold up. Get these terrible source to plowshares out of my deck. Never again. We're at 61 cards right now. I'm going to board out the basic. Let's try this. You could board in Needle, but I think having the, like, Mox Emerald is better, and that would probably be the card I would cut. Can't keep that. Am I really supposed to keep this? I feel like this hand is a, kind of a trap. I think I'm actually going to keep it. Get rid of Mental Misstep. Right? I guess I'll get rid of Fluster. Might bite me in the butt. We'll play a Ruby. Pass the turn. Turn 1 Urza's Saga. Mock Sapphire. Time Walk. Yep. They have four cards left. Mana Vault. I'm going to Mental Misstep that. They have two cards left. They have one card left. So they're likely all in on this Urza Saga by the looks of it. Or they just have like a paradoxical outcome in their hand. All right, so they have one unknown. Looks like it's an outcome. It is. I'm going to Force of Negation. And then they make a very large construct. We find Misty. So my plan is to tinker next turn. So we make a construct. So I can save a bunch of damage if I make a construct a block. I think I'm actually going to let this ability resolve because if they get Needle and Aim Saga, I think that's actually okay. They grab a top. And their draw step was Ancestral Recall? Oh, oh my. That's a Lotus Petal. They have two cards. They spin the top. They're attacking for nine. I'm going to attempt to make a blocker. Okay. In my upkeep, I will cast Mystical Tutor. We'll grab Tinker. I mean, the odds this Tinker resolves, I feel like, are so low. We'll use Saga. Grab a Lotus, I guess. This way I could theoretically pay for, like, a Spell Pierce. Sacrifice the Ruby. And if this gets countered, that's the match. They activate top to look at the top three. Tinker. It resolves. I'll grab a Citadel. Play Time Vault. Play a top? Do we somehow squeak this out? Holy moly. Draw the Force of Will. Play top. Ah, wow. We got incredibly lucky here. Play Time Walk. Mock Sapphire. Let's bounce a Construct. And... I'll draw a card. I think having Shuffle Effects isn't the worst. And there's the key. Boom. Untap Time Vault. I can't believe they had Ancestral Recall plus the top and didn't find it. Let's spin top. Okay, they're not going to waste my time. I appreciate that. Wow, we got lucky there. Resubmit. Well, this is a hand. Yeah, keep. If we lose, we lose. Turn 1 Urza's Saga. Soul Ring. They have five cards. Let's lead on Black Lotus. Tap for a blue. Add some black. Demonic Tutor. We'll grab key. wonder what the move is here. Because, like, I could vamp for the guaranteed mana source next turn. Like, I could go key vamp. I think that might be the move. Play Vampiric Tutor. And we'll grab Mana Crypt. Pass the turn. Saga goes to the second chapter. Grim Monolith. They have five cards. Mishra's Workshop. And they're going to play Jewel. I'm going to attempt a force. Exile to Fairy. Okay, that's a really good sign. We'll play Mana Crypt. 
Spell number two is Time Vault, so we don't lose the Mind Break Trap. Untap. Take an extra turn. So we have to worry about dying to Mana Crypt at this point, which you could argue that I wasn't supposed to grab the Mana Crypt. The reason I did was that if I get Soul Ring and they waste me, like, we can't ever win the game. So I decided that I would be able to win before the Crypt killed me. So we'll untap the Time Vault. Take another turn, play Underground Sea, and play Lorien Revealed. Play a Mox Jet and a Mox Ruby. No. Maybe I was respecting Wasteland too much. I don't know. We'll play a Pearl and Hardcast Lorien Revealed to draw three cards. Play Saga. We'll take another turn. And we are not going to die at this point. Our opponent concedes. Sweet. Okay, so what did I think of the deck list? Obviously, I made a lot of comments throughout this league. Swords to Plowshares has no business being in the main deck. I don't care what anyone says. I hated it. Uh, as a combo player, it hurt my soul, and it was just actively terrible. I also didn't play perfectly. I recognized that I shouldn't have played that time walk in match number two. That was my own fault. But in general, I didn't like the swords. Those are cyborg cards to me. So overall, the deck... Uh, I didn't really love the Yawgmoth spell. I felt like it was really clunky. Opposition Agent might just want to be a third copy of Hull Breacher. Dig Through Time, it was good. The game that we found it when we were struggling to win with Bolas' Citadel. But I think it's more of a, a structural issue with the deck. Like, your deck has no way of winning outside of Time Vault Key. And I think that's kind of a, a, a risky maneuver. So, especially if you don't like the Yawgmoth spell, because if... Part of your combo gets countered, you have to play Yogwell to get it back. There's no time twister, nothing like that. So you're pressured into playing a card that I don't think actually fits the nature of your deck, which is a little bit awkward. Um, so really, the, the pull to white is Lavinia and Teferi, and I didn't really draw Lavinia this league. Like I think moving forward, I would try three, because I do think it's very, very good, but we never drew it, which is a larger problem. So I want to try a heavier Lavinia-based deck. Is it going to be Esper Tinker? I don't know. I th I'm really interested in like Underworld Breach and Lavinia in the same deck. And if that's the case, am I supposed to be playing Luris? That's another question I have. So figuring a lot of things out still. Um, but that's the brain gargle I have right now. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I would appreciate that. Have a great day. And as always, keep storming. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to support the channel. After you do that, open up our description where you can find all of our social media networks, including our Discord, where you can discuss today's deck in that Discord with me and tons of other combo masterminds. It's absolutely free to join, and it's certainly worth your while.